well, certainly their tail back can make a guy miss, and uh, and certainly when he makes him miss, he, he can he can outrun guys in the secondary and bounce it outside and make huge plays. So we have to wrap him up and have to be in our gaps. Um, the tailback, uh, you know, is fast, but then they've got uh, Gajer, <laughs> Sam Gajer, and also uh, Williams, two real fast kids that have good good potential to, to break a play every time and catch a cross and route, run across the field and turn into a 50-yard play. And certainly Henry's got the ability to locate the ball anywhere across the field. You've seen Henry, you've seen Henry play for a while now. What's, uh, has he, what's he doing this year that's maybe, how has he evolved as a quarterback? Back too? Well, you know, he's, he's got so many years playing. And, and, and a, a thing that I'm sure a huge comfort level was Henry is when he showed up at training camp or when he showed up to meet the coaching staff, he had the same offensive coordinator he had had for at least most of the 2000s. So the, there was a comfort with the system. He could become a teacher to all the players. Hey, this is how coach wants it. This is what they try to do. So I really think he, uh, I, I think that makes him at a comfort level. He didn't have to learn new things. And certainly he's made great decisions this year. He hasn't, uh, he, he, his touchdown interception ratio is very good this year. Coach, is this a desperate football team at this point? I, wouldn't, I say we're a frustrated football team. We talked this week. Uh, you know, during the bye week, I tried to talk to about the 15 guys on what we call our bomber council, and and just talk through, you know, what we can do better, what they're frustrated with, what they're frustrated with their teammates with, and and we spent a lot of time our first day back, and 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 we're frustrated because you know we need to play better, and uh, so we're one third through now. We've got an opportunity to to, to fix that tomorrow night, and uh, we'll we'll. we'll Well, yeah, certainly when you win, when you win the game against a conference opponent, you keep everything everything close, and uh, and we we just want to beat Hamilton and and, and and get to two wins. The margin of error though is getting a little bit narrower for you. Guys. Well, it does when you lose to Eastern Conference teams, you know. Uh, as certainly, um, you know, c- certainly when you lose to Eastern Conference teams, they turn into basically four point games. They get they get two, and you don't get two. So we have to make sure we start beating Eastern teams. Yeah, I have a council of 12, 12 young guys, old guys that I that we talk every couple of weeks. No, no, because the team isn't just vets, you know, and the and our team's got less vets than probably young guys, so it's a mixture of guys. Does your team have some growing up to do? Has that been part of the problem? I, you know, I think they're young, and uh, you know, I think we have got a lot of young players that uh, you know haven't been in some situations before because they've been pressed in because injuries on the field, but. You know, they're grown men. They gotta, you know, this is pro football. They have to, they have to understand what they're doing. And 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 and, and the big thing is we we need to rely on them and trust them. You know, so they have to, they have to be held accountable. What do you expect from Coach Reams? Uh, Casey's gonna. Um, uh, I'm sure he's gonna try to rush the passer uh, with, with a four man rush. He plays more zone than man. Um, I think he's going to play some man coverage to try to stop the run and, and make it difficult to throw the ball, and uh, certainly he will uh, uh, he will he will get those guys in their their pass rush. They'll be coming. Uh, he stayed, they've done a good they did a pretty good job against Calgary early in the game, and then later in the third and the fourth quarters when the run game got away from when they had some injuries. So, uh, and I thought they played well against Montreal. They uh, you know Calvillo couldn't get in a rhythm, so he's done a good job mixing up his coverages and what he's trying to do. My coaching tree. Um, well, I, I will say this. I mean, Casey. I was happy to have Casey here for a couple of years. He's a good young coach. Uh, you know, I, I I feel good that he's back in the league and he got an opportunity. You know, with the success we had here to help him become a defense coordinator. So it's great to see guys, you know, continue to move on and get opportunities. Getting that running game established for you there. They've been, as you said, vulnerable against the run and service. Well, the the thing we have to do is we really tried to establish Chad last week, last week, and then what happens is if you're not on the field, if you're two and out, it's hard to establish any type of runs. I know, you know, I've been in games before where the tailback. I mean, last year we had a, a, Chris Garrett had 28 touches in a game. It blew my mind he had 28, but when you're when you have 400 and 
yards of offense, you just don't know. You just keep calling it, and they keep creating first downs. So we have to create first downs when we run by running the ball, and certainly you have to stay on the field on second down, and that gets everybody else touches. But when you're two and out and have, uh, you know, not a lot of plays. It's hard to do that. So certainly, we need Chad to touch the ball, running, passing, is you know, because he's he's a talented player. Yeah, James Green's fine, and uh, we're excited to have him. Um, you know, certainly with the injury, the season-ending injury to Brady Brown last week, that's a huge hole that we were able to just plug in a guy who's been in our system before, who's been a very, who's been a uh, a very good player for us. So uh, we're happy to have him back. It's really great job. November and six weeks into the season, you're asked, answering questions about your job security. It's, is that a frustrating turnaround? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, that's what they think is the news and the most important thing, which, you know, I, I think there's a lot of football that would be left. I think, you know, we have to overcome some challenges early in the season and, we, and we'll do our best to fix in the end of the year. So, yeah, I think sometimes. It can be a negative, frustrating thing. You're, uh, you were uh, often when a team's down its third quarterback, he just expected to manage the game. But Joey Elliott's kind of swashbuckling kind of guy. What are you, what are you wanting to do? Swashbuckling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I want Joey to execute our offense. I want him to be make good decisions with the football, and I want us to move the football and lead us to. Posi- to positions to score. That's what I've asked him to do. I've told him to make sure uh, ball security is an important thing. Um, but I don't think this is not a situation where we're taking a guy who, you know, is a rookie, first year, third string guy. He's been with us a little bit. He was the number two out of camp last year. So he, he certainly has a better command on what we want to do. So I, I, I think it's a little different situation than. We have had an established number two for he's been in the league six or seven years, and you got a kid who's a true rookie in his first year. I, I just don't think Joey is that, so he should be able to, ma- you know, we want him to manage. Now, again, two st- starts under his belt to Henry Burris is, I, I don't know, but, you know, that's what, we, that's what we're going to, that's what we want to do to win the game. You had a, a clear view of where things were uh, after the, the last game prior to the bye. You talked to some key guys on the team during the bye. I'm sure you're very curious to see what the end like coming out of the bye, how focused the guys were, how ready they were. What kind of a sense do you have about their preparedness for this game? Well, one of the things we wanted to make sure those guys, we wanted much better communication. And I know when we had all these different guys playing different spots, we, we, we needed, you know, sometimes young guys just get focused and tuned in on their job and not alone. And you can't do that in football. It's a team sport. You have to all work together. Uh, so we spent a lot of time this week, and especially having some of the guys back. Ian Logan this morning came in on his own, met with three of the, one of the linebackers and one of the other defensive backs, and came up with, hey, coach, we want to handle emotion this way. Uh, is that okay? And uh, Coach Burke said, yeah, that's how we'll handle it. And then he got on the same page with Jovan. So those type of things are things we wanted to make sure that we're correcting. And uh, the energy was the guys had three really good days of practice, and, and they're focused, and they want to – you know, they want to put last week doesn't matter. What has to happen is we have to take it one game at a time and, and, and play our best game against Hamilton. And, uh, you know, usually the team that plays better wins the football game. But I would, I would assume you would have a better sense than anyone of the, the, you know, the, the focus, the concentration, the readiness, that sort of thing. Do you feel like there's a different thing going on for this game that they've, they've got the focus they need to try and make a change to the, the way things are going? Well, I, I, I think they are. Uh, I think they've had a very good week of preparation. I would say that, and I, and I think that it's a room that is together as a team. They, you know, they're with each other. There's not, there has not been one of the things that there has been a lot of infight or anything. They're they're a good unit. They're a good group of young kids. Um, so I, I think they've, I think they're prepared and ready, and, and we'll see. They got to go play it now. Cassidy Donick was out of football for a while, played in Europe. What did you see in him to, to want to bring him on? We brought Cassidy in. Oh, we had an injury at receiver, and we needed a receiver. And we brought him in late last year, and uh, we knew about him. And uh, and he, when he got to practice, he just he just made a lot of catches, and he fl- flew around, was physical. He ended up getting on the roster at the end of the year a little bit, and played very good special teams for us. And uh, he came back to camp and uh, started out on the practice squad, and and we kept him around. And then when and the injuries happened, he had an opportunity to get on. We're carrying a lot of receivers more than we normally do. We have eight receivers on the roster, but really it's because Cassidy's such a good special teams player. He plays on three out of four special teams. So a good, good young kid. He's really stuck with it to sort of stay in the game this long. 
Yeah, he's a married kid, and I remember when I asked him about the practice squad, I wasn't sure how, how that was going to go over. But he says, I said, do it for a little while if you, if you can, and, and it's worked out for him. Okay, guys, thank you. Thanks.